All right, welcome back. I hope that those questions were easy for you. Next, we will go over some liability and legal issues. Legal issues. Student organizations are not official legal entities of the university. It is a very much a dotted line. When you agree to be an advisor as the university representative, you do assume a small degree of risk. Many ask, how do I minimize my risk? You minimize your risk by being familiar with university policies, staying informed of organization activities, and using good judgment. Many advisors have posed hypothetical questions about whether or not they could be sued for damages by the victim of an accident at an organization event or by a vendor with whom the organization has breached a contract. As long as you are acting within the scope of your employment and are not grossly neglecting your duties um, to the student organization, the university will indemnify you. This only, implies to, only applies to UC employees. Some additional policies that advisors must be aware of is the Clery Act. All advisors must complete Clery training annually. We have new policies around this that started in the 2015-2016 academic year. Under federal law, as an advisor, if you know of a crime, you must report it. All of this will be, go will be completed at the Clery training. Additionally, all advisors must be aware of Title IX. We have Title IX trainings that happen around the campus and advisors should be made aware of when a training is available for them to attend as well. As an advisor, you are responsible for reporting any acts that fall under Title IX. You are not protected um, for students to come and tell information, you have to report it. Hazing. The laws of the state of Ohio concerning hazing will be observed at the University of Cincinnati. We have a zero tolerance policy in relationship to hazing. Does this mean that as soon as we hear of something, we 100% shut the organization down? Not necessarily, but it does mean if we do get any reports of hazing, we will investigate. Student organizations and individual members will be held accountable through SALD and the UC Judicial Affairs process. Examples of hazing include, but are not limited to, paddling, sleep deprivation, eating strange food, mental and or physical mistreatment. If you are confused or unsure of something that your students are participating in or doing is hazing, please contact SALD for clarity as soon as possible. If you know of hazing that's happening, we ask you to take action immediately. We have the resources for you to report it anonymously or to report it with your name. As an advisor, this is not, a, not an expectation, it is a requirement. Some additional policies include FERPA. We will not check the grades of a student organization or student organization member unless we have written permission to do so. As well, you should not be checking the grades of a student unless you have written permission to do so. This can be obtained at the beginning of the year when the student enrolls into the organization. It is a violation of FERPA to go in and check without permission. When it comes to risk management, we will cover a few things today. Travel, contracts, and financial policies. A few things that we want to go over right now are, perm are permission and release waivers. Each trip that you take that takes a student off campus, you should have them sign a permission and release waiver. Copies of this can be found on the SALD website or in our campus link page. All students are required to complete the form. There is no harm in completing the form, but if the form is not complete, things can get a little scary. The form should be filed with the organization's advisor or another person who is accompanying the students on the trip. The form contains important information such as allergies, a person to contact should, should something arise. Um, these are important for the advisor to keep on file for the academic year. When it comes to risk management and travel, we define travel as two or more students, I'm sorry, three or more students leaving and representing the university. If the travel is beyond 50 miles, student organizations must reserve a vehicle with University Transportation Services 
or another secured vehicle rental place. One of the perks of being a registered student organization is you get to rent vehicles at the age of 21 and not 25 like, is man like that's mandated at other places like Hertz or Enterprise. All travel must be in compliance with the UC Student Code of Conduct. Travel sponsored by the organization must be consistent with the organization's mission and constitution. Group travel authorization forms must be completed and submitted to the appropriate offices where necessary. If you are the advisor, the students can just submit that to you if they are not using university funding. And all overnight travel must have a travel monitor. This is a faculty member, staff member, or designated member of the student organization. They do not have to travel with the student, but it is, but it is their responsibility to make sure a pre-departure meeting happens and everyone knows how to act and respond in case of an emergency. The student organization travel policy is a university policy, not just limited to student activities and leadership development. If you have questions about this policy, we ask that you just contact us. Some additional things to note, if there will be alcohol served at an event that's off campus, we ask that you hire transportation to escort students to and from the event. In the event that an individual utilizes private transportation, documentation of driver's license and proof of insurance should be submitted with the travel authorization, but they should not be traveling with members of the organization, this is for a single person only. Risk management and contracts. Students or staff members or faculty members are not permitted to sign contracts on behalf of the university. All contracts should be reviewed by the student organization advisor and pushed through the A910 process. Most of our student organizations do not complete contracts. This affects a very small percentage. But if you have to do a contract, we ask that you just contact Student Activities and Leadership Development for assistance. Remember, the contract process takes a minimum of six weeks and a maximum of eight weeks. Fiscal matters. When it comes to student organizations and finances, we ask that you take a, take a special look at what's happening there. When it comes to them having a bank account, we ask that you limit authority on who can make the financial decisions for the organization. Off-campus bank accounts are allowed by the University of Cincinnati, and we ask that it includes the president, the advisor, and the treasurer. In the event that the student organization asks, can we get a debit card, we recommend that the answer is no. If students need funds that quickly, this is a chance to talk to them about preparing for an event in advance. With debit cards, you add a significant amount of risk. All student organizations must be registered with SALD in order to qualify for a free student organization checking account at our campus partner, PNC. If your organization is eligible for UFB funding, there are special policies and procedures that go along with that. The student organizations that do qualify will take a take an additional training to learn about those policies. It is important to know that the funding amount varies annually, so please make sure you check out at the beginning of the year what that funding will be. If you have additional questions, please feel free to contact the Office of Student Activities and Leadership Development and just ask for the University Funding Board Advisor. Quiz time number two. 